Today we are going to have an epic battle between Galaxy S24 Exynos and Galaxy S24 Snapdragon. A Snapdragon is being released in countries such as Canada, US and China and Exynos is the global variant. In the previous test that I have done, we have seen together that Exynos is not as efficient as the Snapdragon on day to day tasks but we didn't really test the gaming performance. That's why I wrote this Android application that you can see on the right side of the screen that measures the battery level, the battery temperature, the RAM utilization, the signal reference, the CPU utilization, and power drawn from the battery. My name is Mo, and I have a PhD in data science, and I'm a scientist in real life. So let's start by The Asphalt 9 is a game that is written by a custom engine. It's not super heavy on your phone, so it should run it properly on Exynos or Snapdragon. There shouldn't be any problem. Right now we are on Wi-Fi. As you can see on the Snapdragon, we are at 29 degrees Celsius. On Exynos also, we are at 29 degrees Celsius. Both of them are still at 100%. They are already running the game for a few minutes. And there is no difference between the temperature, battery drone, or the battery percentage. They are going shoulder on shoulder. I'm gonna do thumbsing also a bit differently. I'm gonna change it to 5G just for the sake of it. It's just for the warm up. We are testing how the application is gonna work and whether we are logging the data correctly. Right now, the temperature of both phones are at 31 degrees Celsius. Again, shoulder to shoulder, there is no difference whatsoever. The battery temperature is now up to 32 degrees almost for the Exynos and 31 degrees Celsius for the Snapdragon variant. The battery for both of them are at 98%. Then we start the PUBG game. PUBG is a bit of a heavier game. I put it again on Wi-Fi for the first part of the test. After a few minutes into the game, the Snapdragon variant is at 35 degrees Celsius and the Exynos is at 35 degrees Celsius also. So there is virtually no difference so far. It seems on Wi-Fi, Exynos really don't have a problem. I also feel like after updates, some stuff has changed. I feel like the thermals works better on the Exynos variant for whatever reason. Maybe they watched my videos, <laughs> I don't know. Um, the power drawn is also between two to three watts per second, which is quite typical. Uh, I don't see any difference. The Exynos raised the temperature a bit higher, it's now at 39 degrees Celsius, while the Snapdragon stayed at 38 degrees Celsius. We are approaching the end of the game and both phones did pretty well, 60 frames per second quite easily. The body temperature is also quite alright, both of them are 37 to 35 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look at the charts together. The blue is the Exynos and the rest are for Snapdragon. On the X axis you have time and on the Y axis you have power in the unit watts. Basically you can see over time how much power each unit took from the battery. The higher is the worse, it means the CPU is less efficient. As you can see the Exynos drawn more power which was mostly on Wi-Fi but the difference is very negligible, it's not that high. Maybe if you are talking about 6 to 7 percent difference that can be also a margin of error, so I don't see any problem so far with the Exynos variant performance. On the other hand, this can change when we go to 5G, which is the next test that we are going to conduct. So, so far we have no performance issues, both of the variants have 60 frames per second on Wi-Fi on these two games that we played so far. I also put both games on the maximum setting possible. Now we are testing PUBG Mobile on 5G. The Exynos variant is at 80% while the Snapdragon is at 82%. As you can see, unfortunately the Exynos variant is not behaving really nicely here and it heats up to 39 degrees Celsius, almost 40 degrees Celsius already, while the Snapdragon is keeping it cool at 37 degrees Celsius. And also the power that is being drawn from the Exynos variant is much higher than the Snapdragon. This is due to a not very efficient 5G modem that is being attached to the Exynos variant. Also as you can see the Exynos variant already dimmed the screen because it overheats and it got to 40 degrees Celsius. If you look at the chart it's more visible what I'm talking about. The power drawn from the Exynos variant is blue and is almost always 
one to one and a half degree higher than the Snapdragon in terms of watts. Now let's take a look at the temperature, how the temperature raised during this game, PUBG Mobile and 5G. As you can see, the Exynos variant just after four or five minutes, it started to raise the temperature of the battery while the Snapdragon kept it cool. In general, it was on average two to three degrees Celsius cooler than the Exynos variant. This can be a bit problematic if you live in tropical areas and you plan to play PUBG Mobile outside. But at the same time, I should also say that last time that I played PUBG Mobile, the temperature raised to 51 degrees Celsius, this time only 45 degrees Celsius. Again, I feel like the thermal management kind of became better after the updates. By the way, if you are curious about the app I wrote, it is written using Android Studio. You can also write such apps yourself, and I suggest that you get a cheap yet powerful mini PC to do so. Thanks to Nipogi for sending me their latest mini PC CK10, which made it easy for me to develop application. You can play games on this mini PC too. For example, I played Three Kingdoms on it, which is a heavy game, and it ran smoothly. The PC that I have has 32 GB of RAM and half a terabyte of storage with Intel Core i5 and Windows 11 pre-installed. The mini PC is super light and you can use it as a server too. I asked them to provide some discount codes for the audience and they are down in the description below. You get up to 10% off on top of already discounted price in Amazon. Honestly, I have no idea how they managed to keep the prices this low. Don't forget to grab the discount code and use the Amazon link in the description. This way you can help the channel too to stay impartial since I buy the phones with my own money. Thanks to Nipogi to send me this device for free to show it to you. Before we go to the next part, which is playing Genshin Impact on 5G and Wi-Fi, I was a bit curious how the Antutu test is gonna turn out if I conduct it on 5G instead of Wi-Fi. Are we gonna see a significant uh, drop or not? And I was right, uh, you are gonna see a significant drop in performance if you run the Antutu on 5G, especially on the Exynos variant. Then we move to playing Genshin Impact on Wi-Fi on maximum setting on both variants for exactly half an hour. So I put a timer to not forget. The Exynos is already at 41 degree Celsius, similar to a Snapdragon, which is also at 41, 42 degree Celsius. And the Exynos variant is at 38% battery left and the Snapdragon is at 43% battery left. They are quite similar. There is like five, six percent difference. I also feel like the power usage is not different in these two variants. Both of them are holding quite well in terms of frame per second. You see sometimes drops to 50 frames per second from 60, but nothing crazy. Both of them in terms of the body temperature is also 40 degrees Celsius. In this chart, you can see what I'm talking about more precisely. The Exynos variant is conducting the test very similarly on Wi-Fi on Genshin Impact on the max setting, similar to a Snapdragon. You don't see the power usage from the Exynos variant being much higher than the Snapdragon. Both of them always kept the power watts from four to five uh, during the whole test and you don't see a very huge gap between the performance or efficiency of these two, again, on Wi-Fi. If we move to the battery temperature, we will see a very interesting chart. As you can see, the Exynos variant was actually conducting the test better. It was keeping the temperature cooler, but on average also it is one degree cooler throughout the whole test. Also, you can see how the CPU throttles uh, for the Exynos variant, it has started to throttle later compared to the Snapdragon. Again, it's a very interesting result and it is in favor of Exynos. I think in the whole four or five tests that we've already done, this is the first time that Exynos variant is conducting a test and performing better and more efficiently than the Snapdragon variant. So kudos to Exynos. Now, finally, we are gonna do the last part of the test, which is playing Genshin Impact on 5G. Genshin Impact is using Fulcon, maybe that's the reason that it's actually performing pretty well on the Exynos variant. On the 5G, both of them are right now at 40 degrees Celsius. The Exynos variant is at 20% battery life left, Snapdragon is at 28% battery life left, but the performance 
is quite similar. The Exynos a couple of times dropped to 42-45 frames per second. The Snapdragon also dropped a couple of times to 46-47 frames per second. Towards the end, as you can see, the Exynos dropped the frame to 45, so the CPU was throttling while the Snapdragon had a better sustained performance. You can already see that the Snapdragon didn't perform much better. In fact, it was even slightly more power hungry compared to the Exynos. I would say that's probably a margin of error. So I would rate them similarly in terms of power efficiency. And there is really not a big difference between them. I should say though, if you look at the next chart, you will notice that something peculiar happened during this test. And that's the Exynos started to throttle quite early at 42, 43 degrees Celsius. That's a bit interesting behavior. I thought that the throttling is going to happen on a much higher temperature. And that's one of the reasons that it didn't use as much power. I mean, the performance dropped because of this throttling. You can clearly see that the frame per second dropped from 50 to 40, even lower 40 sometimes. At the same time, of course, in return, it used less power. And in this chart also, the temperature on average was lower than the Snapdragon variant. And now we have the final result, 19% for the Snapdragon variant and 11% battery life left for the Exynos variant. Uh, I also put both phones overnight just on standby on 5G to test how the standby works. And again, both of them used almost the same amount of battery. And the next day I put some YouTube shorts just to drain the battery and see what's the final result. My final thought is that on Wi-Fi, there is virtually no difference whatsoever on the Exynos versus the Snapdragon variant for gaming on 5G, on PUBG. The Exynos performed really poorly on Genshin Impact. They were very shoulder to shoulder. The Exynos variant had few frame drops, but in terms of efficiency and temperature, it was quite all right. Since there is no official communication, I cannot confirm it 100%. Just from my observation, it seems like the Exynos variant already performing slightly better after the updates and the difference, at least in gaming, is not as huge as it used to be. Frankly, I thought the difference is going to be more like 20 to 30% even, but it was only 10%. I mean, still, the Snapdragon is the better chipset. I'm going to also put a couple of links on the YouTubers that I got inspired for making this test on the description down below if you want to check this out. Thanks for tuning into Tecmo and until the next one, bye!